All right, uh, multiplying radicals. I, I think I gave you this example before in last year too. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start off with this. Root 9, root 16, and the question is, does it equal to root 9 times 16? Well, on the left side, what's root 9? What's the root 16? What's 3 times 4? Okay. Now with the right side, let's do 9 times 16 first. So what's 9 times 16 first? Yeah, what big number is it? You got a calculator? 144. And when you take the square root of 144, that's not so big anymore. It's 12. Hey, look, it's the same. Okay, now what about the next one here? Next one here says this, negative 5 root 9 times 2 root 16. So what I'm going to ask us to do is, let's take a look. What's root 9 again? That's just 3. What's uh, root 16 again? That's just 4. So now I have 5 times 3 times 2 times 4. 5 times 3 is 15 times 2. Oh, sorry, negative 15, I guess. Yeah, it was a negative. Negative 15 times 2 is negative 30 times 4 is negative 120. Okay? And now let's see if this is the same with the right-hand side. I've got negative 5 times 2. And once again, I'm going to multiply the 9 and 16 together first. That's root 144. What's uh, root 144 equal to? That seems to be 12. So what's negative 5 times 2 times 12? Is that equal to negative 120? You bet. Same again. So what I'm trying to illustrate to you here is that we have a rule for multiplying radicals. Okay, and I know this looks a little bit complicated, but nonetheless, it's the same idea. If I have a number up front, okay, the m multiplied by a radical times n multiplied by another radical, okay, notice that the radical has to have the same index. The k has to be the same. But if that's the case, all you need to do is multiply the outside numbers together. That's m times n. And then just multiply the numbers inside the square root, which is the radical or radicand portion, together as well. And we're done. Okay. So once again, they have to be the same index. Okay. So I'll note, I'll say here, note, same index. I can't multiply them together if one's a square root and another one's a cube root. Okay. Index is that little k value. Okay. There's the index. Now, of course, we looked at restrictions last day, too, and there are restrictions here. Notice that A and B have to both be greater or equal to zero if the index is what type of number? Not just positive, but even, right? Square roots, fourth roots, sixth roots. If it's odd, right, no restrictions. No restrictions. Okay, because of course when you take the cube root of negative numbers, it's okay. So really what I want you to do today is just quickly look at some examples. One, two, three, four, five, as many as we can, about how we can multiply them. And by the way, I like you to do these questions without the calculator. Okay, I think you should be able to do this without the calculator. Now my advice to you in this case is, well, look at this one. I've got 4 root 10 times negative 6 root 15 times negative root 25. It might be advantageous for you to simplify first. For example, what's root 25 equal to? Yeah, so if you simplify first, life usually is a little bit easier. Like how I told you to do that on the test, but some of you didn't do that in the last chapter 6 test. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, not, let's not talk about the past, that's right. So 4 times negative 6 times negative 5. We'll put that together. I believe that's 120. And I guess you can go 10 times 15, that's root 150. And if you leave it like this, I'll be very, very upset. Because you can reduce it, right? Okay. So help me out. Someone help me out. How can I reduce 150? 150 is equal to what times what? Or if you want to use prime factors, break it down too. But can you break it into a nice prime, or not prime, a greatest common factor? What were you saying, Vincent, back there with your big yawn? Well, not Vincent, Victor. Right. Yeah, I think 25 and 6 is a good choice. Because root 25 is just 5, right? So 120 times 5 root 6. 
and 120 times 5 is just 600, so 600 root 6. Good. Okay. Well, why don't you try the next one, please? Notice these are all cube roots now. And because there's a bracket, you need to distribute, distribute, distribute into both of those. So I will distribute like this with you. I'll help you out with the first part. Negative 2. And this becomes the cube root of 2 times 24 is just 48. And then 2 times 5 is 10. Cube root of 2 times 2, which is 4. And I wouldn't say square root 4. This is the cube root of 4. Because if you think square root, you'll be like, oh, that's equal to 2. But this one's not. The cube root of 4 is not equal to 2. So you cannot simplify the cube root of 4, but maybe you can simplify the cube root of 48. Now, in this case, dear friends, don't think about this. Don't think about, oh, what perfect square divides evenly? Because now I'm thinking about cubes. So you either think what perfect cube divides evenly into this, or you start listing out the prime factors. Okay. If you were listing out the prime factors, how about 2 and 24? 24 becomes, I think, 2 and 12. And then what's 12 become? 2 and 6, 2 and 3. Now, I list out the prime factors in this case because I'm looking for the cube root, which means I want how many of the same? 3 of the same. Oh, look, here's 3 of the same. So I believe this just equals to negative 2, and I've got a 2 that comes out, and I still have a cube root of what's left inside? The 2 and the 3, which is 6. Thank you. 10 cube root of 4. And I think in this case, I really can't combine them together. All I can do is just put the negative 2 and 2 together to give you negative 4 cube root of 6 plus 10 cube root of 4. And I think that's it because I can't simplify any further since the radicand inside the cube root are different. All right, I'm going to let you try uh, C and D on your own first, okay? And I hope you've done part C already, okay? So uh, 6 and the 3, I guess that's 18. Hey, ladies, gentlemen, let's get started here, please, okay? 18 root 6. You got a 6 root 3 and a 5. I think that's just 30 root 3s. You got a 2 and a 3. That's 6 root 12. And then I've got uh, negative 2 times 5, which is 10, 10 root 6, okay? By the way, if you leave it like that, you're wrong. Let's see if you can combine them together. I see these ones you can combine. 28 root 6. Okay, but ladies and gentlemen, I think we have an issue here with root 12 as well. You can simplify that for me. What's root 12? 2 root 3? Okay. So minus 6, and instead of having a 12, it becomes 2 root 3. Excellent. This helps because 6 times 2 is 12, so I'll write this again. That's 28 root 6 minus 30 root 3 minus 12 root 3. And then I guess you can put the root 3s together now. So how about 28 root 6s minus 42 root 3s? I noticed some of you actually took out a factor of 14. You can if you want, but that answer is perfectly fine. Like I said, if you wanted to, you can take out a 14. This is okay as well. Okay? Both are fine. Up to you. All right. So C, pretty straightforward. Just remember to distribute. And I think for D, we'll take a look at this one now because this one's a little bit more tricky. 4 and 8, I think, gives you 32. And then I see a 10x to the power of 4. Okay, so notice once again, numbers on the outside multiply together. Numbers on the inside multiply together. And then the next part, negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. And then I've got now 25, 5 times 5, x to the power of 6. And I think the last thing I have here is negative 8 root 5x. And if you leave your answer like this, I'd be shameful of you because you should be able to simplify here as well. Uh, okay.
Now, notice I can split up that square root into different components like root 10 and root x to the power of 4. What's root x to the power of 4? Nothing. Oh, x squared. Yeah, so I guess that part just becomes negative 32 root 10. I'll call it x squared. Okay. And then I guess I can do the same thing with that next term here. 4 with a root 25 with a root x to the 6. What's root 25, first of all? That's 5. So 4 times 5 is 20. So that's nice. What's the square root of x to the power of 6? What's that? x what? x to the power of 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I guess over here I still have an 8 and a root 5x, which I can't simplify, so I guess I'll just copy that down. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all we can do. That's it. You're done. Okay. <clears throat> Remember, no calculator right now. No calculator. Okay. So... Once again, no calculator. Let's see if you can do this next one here. And I'll just give you a little hint by showing you the picture, but I want you to see if you can solve this on your own. An isosceles triangle. Hmm. What do we know about isosceles? Same sides? How many sides are the same? Two of them. It says here the base of this triangle is root 24. And then each of the equal sides is 2 root 5. And their question here says calculate the exact area, remember exact, no decimals, no calculators, of the triangle. Hmm. Okay. May I suggest you find the height of the triangle? And if you can find the height, you already have the base. I guess the area of a triangle is just equal to base times height divided by 2. I'd like you to go find out the height somehow. Good luck. I'll give you a chance to think about that. All right. All right. So I think many of you used a triangle like this. 2 root 5, root 6. This is the height. Pythagoras to your rescue again. So root 6 all squared plus h all squared equals to 2 root 5 all squared. Shh. Ah. Listen up. Root 24 divided by 2. Many of you wrote down root 12. It is true. Shh. It is true if it was dividing by root 2 because then you can put the roots together to give you root 12, okay? If you wanted to leave it like this, you would just go ahead and leave it as 24 or root 24 over 2. That's like the simplified form. Or you could rewrite this as 2 root 6 over root 2. And like what I showed you earlier, the 2 and the 2 cancel out to give you just root 6, okay? So don't make that fatal mistake. So in any case now, root 6 all squared. That just becomes 6. And now 2 root 5 squared. Remember, you're distributing the 2 into both these things. So you're going to square the 2, which is 4. Square the root 5, which is 5. So I believe that's just 20. So I believe h squared is 14. So h is just root 14. Now, don't give me a decimal now. I want an exact answer anyways in the end. So leave your answer for h as just root 14. Okay? Now, go ahead and find the area, because now you know the base. The base is root 24. The height is root 14. Okay, now what's 14 times 24? Now, wait a minute, no calculators. Okay, Shh, no calculators. So this is what I suggest you do. Why don't you break these numbers 24 and 14 into its prime factors? What's 24 as a multiplication of prime factors? How about 2? times 2, well that's 4. I know 4 times 6 is 24, so I guess 6 is the same thing as 2 and 3. So there's my root 24. 
How would I break down my root 14? Okay, again. 2 times 7. Very good. Okay, all over 2. Now, why would this be pro? Because look, you've got a pair of 2s. Another pair of 2s. <coughs> so that's 2 times 2 is 4. And you're left on the inside as 3 and a 7, which is just 21. You still have to divide by 2 because this is the area of a triangle. Base times height divided by 2. So 4 and 2 simplify. How about 2 root 21? Yay. There is your exact area. Okay? That's multiplication. What's next? Divide. Divide. Division. Okay. Let's divide. Let's divide radicals. So, let me show you two ways again. Let's see what you find. Shh. By the way, the question is not like this this time, okay? So, cube root of 216 over 27. Can someone help me out with their calculator? I said simplify the radicand first. What's root 216 divided by 27? That's just root 8. Okay. So this is not the root 8, but the cube root of 8. And what's the cube root of 8? Duh. Not duh, but duh, right? <laughs> yeah, 2. 2. Now, do the same thing, but notice on the right-hand side, I split up the fraction into two cube roots. What's the cube root of 216? 6, thank you. The cube root of 27? 3. Also equals to? 2. Same. Okay. <coughs> now, next one. 15 over 3. And I ask you to multiply that by the square root of 36 over 9. Let's simplify the rag hand first. So what's 36 divided by 9? 4, yeah. <laughs> and square root of 4 is 2. So 15 times 2 over 3, 15 times 2 is 30, divided by 3 is 10. Okay. And then also on the right, notice what I've done with that radical. I split that up into two separate radicals. So I'm going to copy the 15 over 3, but what's root 36 in this case? What's root 36? 6. What's root 9? Three, that's good. I'm just doing them separately, right? Well, what does this simplify to? If you wanted to reduce, you can go one and a five, one and a two. Oh, look, ten. Same. This is difficult. Oh, yeah, that's five. True, 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 true. Anyways, here's the general rule. What happens when you're dividing radicals? Well, guess what? You just leave the M and the N. You do those separately, right? Just like how we did the multiplication, the numbers outside the root we can do separately. And then what happens to the numbers inside the root or the radical? Once again, it has to be the same index. And in this case, I can rewrite it as just one fraction like that. Okay? Once again, it's the same index. If there are different indexes or indices, you cannot combine them together. You can't multiply and divide them. So once again, we have some notes here. A has to be bigger than 0. B has to be bigger than 0. If the index is? Odd. I mean odd. Even. And if it's odd? <laughs> no restrictions? No restrictions? <clears throat> no restrictions. Wait, wait, wait. Shh. Calm down, folks. If it was odd, you're right. Some of it, like the A value, has no restrictions. That's cool because it's on the top. But what about the bottom? Cannot equal to zero. Thank you. So be careful here. It says, what other restrictions are there when dividing radicals? Note. 
okay, the denominator, okay, cannot equal to zero. So really, I did not tell you the truth up here. Listen up. Note, A has to be bigger than equal to zero. B has to be greater or equal to zero. Well, you just said that the denominator can't be zero. So guess what? I want you to physically scratch this out right now. Okay? Like with your own pencil. Or go ahead and cross this out and say B has to be only bigger than zero if it's even. Because it cannot be equal to zero. Okay? I made a typo on purpose so you can correct your notes. So when you go study, you'll remember this. Oh, yes, this is a mistake. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, then, if k is odd, is there no restrictions? Not exactly. I'll say there is a restriction, and the restriction here is that b cannot be equal to zero. Okay? A can be anything. Hello. Simplify each expression. So here's example number two. Once again, I'm going to ask you just to do these separately. So 18 divided by 9, we can do separately. And then the 21 over 3, we'll do together. What's 18 divided by 9? 2. 2. Good. What's 21 over 3? Done. There's your answer. 2 to 7. Okay. All right. Let's do the next one, please. I got two seconds left. I want to finish this up. Split them up, like I said. Split them up. Now, 7 over 2 seems to already be simplified, so I'm not going to touch that right now. But I think the square root inside, or sorry, the radic hand inside the square root is something we can touch. 44 divided by 11 is? 4. x to the power of 7 divided by x to the power of 3 is? 4. Whoa. Yeah, now that simplifies 2 to the number 2 with an x squared. Now, this is nice because now I can take a look at the 7 over 2 in front. Multiply, 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 and I get negative 7x squared. By the way, is there a restriction on this one here? No? What's the index, first of all? Even or odd? It's even, so therefore... We need to make sure that the stuff inside the square root is bigger or equal to zero. Just bigger than zero? What's going on? Bigger or bigger or equal to? Why not why not equal to? Yeah. Oops. So make sure you know it's just bigger, not bigger or equal to. Because your NPVs are back. Yes, your non-permissible values are back. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay. <clears throat> now, ladies and gentlemen, C looks mighty ugly. May I suggest you try to simplify first? Okay. So for part C, can you go ahead and simplify 54p to the 7 first? Then you might want to simplify the cube root of 250p to the 7. And then you might also want to simplify the cube root of 125p cubed. Do the simplification first, and then uh, go ahead and simplify. What's the cube root of 54p to the 7 simplify to? Shh. 3 what? Shh. Hey, seriously, let's finish this up. 3p squared, okay. Yeah, I agree. Okay, I agree with that. Um, I think the next one here, the cube root of 250, that's 125 times 2. The cube root of 125 is, once again, 5. And then I think you've got a cube root of 2. Now, with that p to the power of 7, think about that. There's 7 p's. I'm looking for groups of 3. So there are two groups of 3, so that's p squared. And you're left with 1 p once again inside. Great. And then on the bottom here, the cube root of 125, once again, is just 5. The cube root of p cubed is just p, so I think that is perfect. So once you simplify first, I would now suggest you go back and plug it into the actual uh, expression. 
So now I have 3p squared cube root of 2p. And I'm going to subtract from that the cube root of that. So that's 5p squared the cube root of 2p. So that's the numerator. And your denominator just seems to be a lovely now 5p. Okay. Now once again, <clears throat> I would suggest you try to simplify first. So 15 times 3, that's 45 now, p squared with the cube root of 2p. And now I have minus, oh wait a minute, aren't these the same radicand and the same index? The cube root of 2p, the cube root of 2p. So if they're the same, what can I do at the top? Simplify those, yeah. So once again, I'll just write this as 5p. And then what's 45p squared cube root of that thing minus 5p squared cube root of that thing? I think about 40 of those, right? 40p squared, the cube root of 2p. And we're going to divide this by 5p. And how does that simplify? Well, what's 40 divided by 5? 8. What's p squared divided by p? p. And then we have the cube root of 2p. Done.